My name is Sue Rivera and I'm the Associate Vice President for Research at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm going to talk to you about research regulatory committees. Research administrators may not directly interact with the regulatory committees, but it's important for them to understand what those committees do and how they fit into the broader research enterprise. When we accept grants to conduct research, we have a stewardship responsibility, not only for the dollars to make sure they're spent appropriately, but also to make sure that the research is conducted in an ethical fashion. And the research committees at most universities or academic medical centers are put in place to provide a peer review to make sure that that happens. So we have IRBs that oversee the use of human subjects in research. We have IACUCs that oversee the use of animals, animal care and use at universities and academic medical centers. We also have biosafety committees or IBCs that oversee the use of recombinant DNA and also may oversee use of toxic materials and other kinds of hazardous agents. We're also required to do other things like monitor conflicting interests in research and some institutions monitor and oversee the use of human embryonic stem cells in research. These committees serve an important function, uh, so it's important for research administrators to know who are the staff on their campus who manage those committees, so when something comes up in a proposal that looks like it might involve humans or looks like it might involve animals or recombinant DNA, and it's necessary to certify that all of the proper precautions are being taken, you'll know who to reach out to on your campus in order to get the information you need to assure that the proposal can go out the door or um, at the time of funding that the award can be set up feeling secure that all of the necessary regulatory protections are in place for that project.